Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, 9 Meta Gang here, and today I'm going to be giving a quick recap over the rules using the version 3.0 game manual. This will just be a quick recap of all of the game specific rules and game specific definitions. So, just the stuff specific to the game, I'm not going to be covering the general rules or the robot rules. This will just be a quick refresher because I know this will be the version of the game manual that's running for a lot of signature events. I know this is where most te teams had their last chance to qualify for their event region championship, they have their event region championships. So this will be a pretty important version of the game manual. A lot of teams, this will be the last version of the game manual that they play on. So I figured I'd just give it a quick breakdown. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. And please be sure to share this with your clueless sister teams because this is a very important video because your sister teams do not know the rules. Do not assume that they know the rules. So share it with them. And let's get into it. So first up, we have the corners. Corners are triangles and they are a 3D volume, meaning that as long as the goal is partially above the volume, then it counts as being inside. You do not actually have to be touching the area or the tape line, and the outside of the tape line is what is considered the boundary for that. You have negative and positive corners. Climbing. Robots are considered climbing if they are, like, grabbing onto the ladder. They do not have to be up the ground. They just have to be intentionally grasped. Or, of course, if you are officially climbed, then that does count as being climbed. And for Vex U, you also get climbing protections if you're touching a robot that is climbing for the buddy climb. Plowing is when you are pushing a mobile goal um, with a flat or convex surface, so you're not concave surface using that to like have possession of the goal, which kind of ties into the next part, and you're also not grabbing the goal. So big difference between plowing and possession. Rings still fit the same number of goals at the beginning of the season. Six on the mobile goals, two on the alliance stakes, six on the neutral stakes, and one on the high stake. And our point values have stayed relatively similar. Auton is still six points. Regular ring is one point. The top ring is three points. The high stake gets a bonus three points. Climbs are still 3, 6, and 12 points, and corners still double, and then at turn the points into negative points. Scores are still calculated when the match ends, or 5 seconds afterwards, so like if your robot falls 10 seconds af off the ladder 10 seconds after the match ended, you're still good. Same thing with the autonomous bonus. Rings are scored on the stake if they're partially encircled around the stake. Uh, you can't have more than the maximum number of rings on it. Rings are allowed to be touching the ground, and they are allowed to be touching robots of the same colored alliance in order to count as scored. Whichever ring is furthest from the base is considered our top ring, even if it's not necessarily the tallest vertically. And you can't score your rings on the other team's alliance stake. Even if they do end up there, they don't count for points. Goals are placed in the corner if they're breaking that plane, which I was talking about earlier. Like I said, it's a 3D volume. Additionally, part of the mobile goal barb has to be above the top of the field perimeter, so the goal can't essentially be tipped over. The goals must be upright in order to be considered scored in the corner, so you can't tip over a goal in order to get it out of the corner, whether that's your own goal in the negative corner or the opponent's goal in the positive corner. However, that does still count as removing the goal for the corner for rule SG11. And if there is an event of a tie, it's whichever one is essentially most in the corner, which you can kind of see in this diagram. That goal is further in, that one is further out. Really, this doesn't come up too much. Positive goals just double the points, and the negative goals subtract ring points only. They don't subtract hang or autonomous points, which can be relevant if the other team doesn't have a lot of rings scored and most of their points are in hang. Then climbing the level, you have to be above the highest point of each of the rung in order to be considered climbed above a level. Of these planes, which this ties into SG3, you can only be breaking two of these at once. So if you're touching plane zero, you're on the ground. You can only extend up. To right below the top of the gray bar. As soon as you get off the ground, you can extend up right below the top of the yellow bar. Hmm, I wonder if anyone's going to exploit that. Autonomous swim point, there must be three rings scored of your color. Doesn't matter where on the field these are. If your opponents accidentally score rings for you, these count. Then you must have two rings scored on stakes on your side of the field. So this one your opponents can't accidentally do for you because these goals have to be on your side of the field or your own alliance stake that does count for this. Both robots have to be off the plane of the starting line. It doesn't matter if they leave and come back. That still counts as being on the starting line. And then where it must be contacting, which is just touching the ladder. Although non-functional decorations don't count. So if you're using your license plates to touch the ladder, that doesn't count because license plates are technically non-functional decorations. Then for signature events and event region championships, which a lot of teams will be having their event region championships soon and won't have competed at a signature event, it's important to remember the autonomous win point criteria are different. You must have four rings scored and three of them must be on stakes on your side of the autonomous line. And one of those rings does have to be on your alliance wall stake, as well as the additional criteria. And then the high stake bonus, if you do manage to get a ring up on the high stake, that gives you plus two points to each of your hangs, which can be doubled by buddy climb. You must start the match hovering over the starting line. You don't actually have to be touching it. You just need to have some part breaking the plane of this line, kind of like with the goals. Horizontal is expansion. You can only expand out one side of your robot, and you can only expand out six inches. 
um, if you don't already start at maximum size, you can't fully expand out later, as you can see here. So it can be helpful to have like some zip ties going out the side of your robot if you want to do a little bit of sideways expansion. But just be careful about that because you can't switch direction you're expanding out of. Like I said before, you can only be breaking two planes at once. So once you get above that line right there, above the black bar, you can expand up vertically infinitely. You can't intentionally remove storing objects from the field, although you will not be penalized if you're removing your own rings, um, because that might happen when you're trying to score wall stakes. It's pretty common that teams will miss and their rings will fall out of the field. Then the head referee will place them back into the field. Throwing a mobile goal out of the field is still an instant DQ, and removing three of the opponent's rings during one match is also considered an instant DQ. So be extra careful if you're de-scoring. Each robot gets one preload. You must have your preload touching a robot at the start of the match, and you can't use your partner's preload, and preloads can't start scored. You can still only possess two rings and one mobile goal. If you are possessing a mobile goal, then you can't be pushing around other mobile goals. So it's fine if you're not possessing a goal to be pushing around multiple goals as long as those are with flat surfaces, but if your robot is carrying a mobile goal, you can't manipulate other mobile goals until you put the one down you're carrying, period. So that's very blunt. Don't shove goals around the field because that can be a cause for a DQ, especially if it's considered... I believe one of the Q&As said it's advantageous by the referees. So even if you move it closer to your positive corner, you could potentially be DQ'd for that, even if it's not match affecting. And guarding the mobile goal, so sitting in the corner, as long as you're not moving it around, that's not considered possessing or plowing. You cannot cross the autonomous line. It is not considered the same as like the corners or the starting line where those you're allowed to overhang and that still counts. You are allowed to overhang over the autonomous line if you cannot physically touch the tiles scoring objects so you are allowed to touch the tape on the autonomous line, but it's mostly with your wheels. So it's fine if like parts of your robot stick out in front of your wheels and those go over, but you can't like intentionally exploit this to like reach all the way over to the other team's side because if you're touching scoring objects that start on the other side of the autonomous line, that is a violation of this rule. Additionally, if you violate this rule, you cannot get the autonomous win point. If you're both goal rushing and you end up crossing, you might be penalized, you might not. It depends on the head referee's interpretation. But assuming it's incidental, which I would assume it is, you will not be penalized. So be careful because if you end up goal rushing and like dragging somebody's robot across the line, that might mess up with the rest of your autonomous. And as long as it's not strategic, repeated, or egregious, then it won't be a violation. You can't knock robots off the ladder or once they are climbing, so they don't even have to be off the ground. But once they're grabbed onto the ladder, you're not allowed to mess with them. Um, this can be quite dangerous, especially if they have a tier three hang because it essentially gives them a 12 point swing for if it's a match affecting violation. If it is determined that the opponents would have won if they'd hung, even if they couldn't have actually really hung, as long as there was a slim chance that they could have, you will be DQ'd. So as soon as a robot grabs onto the ladder, make sure you stay away from them. And then you are allowed to climb up after a robot has already gone up, but you're not going to get as much climbing protection. So it's considered a bit risky. And don't mess with your other opponent's alliance wall stakes. And finally, the big one, positive corners are protected during the endgame. So if any goal is considered to be in the positive corner during the last 30 seconds, as per the definition of corners, then you cannot touch those mobile goals at all. If you touch it and it's like incidental and it's not actually affecting the scoring of any of them. So if you just bump them, but the goal stays in the corner, that's most likely to be a minor violation. You have to be careful because if the score does change then and you do benefit from it, then it could be a major violation and you will likely be DQ'd. Additionally, if you're forced into this, like you're being pinned in the corner and you can't let go of the goal, then that won't be a violation. So that kind of covers all of these specific rules that have changed. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. This is just gen might be a nice general recap. And good luck at your event region championships. And I'll see you at Worlds.